Jimmy, thank you so much. That was amazing. Thanks, Rajiv. That was amazing. And not only are you a great and gifted speaker, but the sharing of the story and telling us what's possible uh, through generations. Thank you very much. Another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have a few questions here. Um, the first one is, what, uh, you know, the family's values have come down through the generations, but you've got, what, 50, 60,000 employees? How do you make sure that all the employees actually carry and live those values? Because, you know, it's not possible for you to monitor 60,000 people. Of course. So how do you do that? Well, there's a, there's a couple of different ways that we proliferate the values through the organization. Um, I would say there's, there's three ways. Um, I think you can't underestimate the role of a purpose statement in attracting the kind of uh, individuals, strategic partners, broad stakeholders that you want in your camp. Um, and, and it's a reference, frankly, for all those stakeholders on who we are, what they can expect from us, um, and how we're accountable to that proposition for all of them. So I think the purpose statement is certainly one place to start that helps proliferate these values, because everyone can reference that. Um, but it's also important, uh, as I had alluded to in the speech, the, the role of leadership mm -hmm. right, in driving this. Um, there's a lot of incentives in a large organization, and, and I think it's important for leadership to set the standard that there are strategic trade-offs that these managers and stakeholders, frankly, that you involve uh, in the corporation, that, hey, perhaps you, know, you might need to prioritize the trade-offs for long-term value creation rather than short-term profits. And lastly, uh, one of the ways that we proliferate these values is through the centers of excellence in the holding company. As I mentioned, we, we operate somewhat like a federated state, uh, um, but we see the holding company as a source of those values and a way to proliferate that. And we do that through many centers of excellence in innovation, sustainability, uh, data analytics, other, other things that we are think are, are important principles to the organization. So we have a purpose statement, we have leadership really pushing uh, people to adopt this, and then we have centers of excellence that, that interact with a diverse set of, of representatives throughout mm -hmm. the portfolio. Very good, thank you. There's another question, interesting one. Let me see if I can put this up on the screen. It is very inspiring to hear about ETM. How long ago did Ayala plan for it? Well, this, I'm proud to say we're the, we're the first to, to be able to do this transaction. Um, it has been a, a discussion with the Asian Development Bank for some time. Um, uh, I think what was very interesting about it was that there were two uh, interests between the organizations, right? There is a, a fundamental issue with these thermal assets, right? Uh, while one organization might be able to sell it and keep it off their books, uh, another organization might inherit that, right? So it does not solve the burning stakeholder problem for all the stakeholders that are involved in that transaction. Um, th this has been a process that has been worked over for the last year or so. Um, uh, I think uh, if you ask our AC Energy team what it feels like, it probably feels like it's been five years over the last couple of months in working on it. Um, but it has been a, a, a goal of ours to work with the ADB on this particular transaction uh, over the last year or so. Very wonderful. All right, I have another question here. Let me see if this works this time. Uh, the second question. Uh, as the next generation leader of Ayala, how will you evolve these values and purpose, if at all? Well, Along with your cousins and others. Yes, uh, of the course. The next generation. The next generation, of yes. course, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think we evolve the values too much. I think the values remain constant. Uh, we have four core values at Ayala. Integrity, empowering leadership, long-term orientation, and commitment to national development. We really haven't changed those values too much over the course of you know, mm -hmm. succeeding generations. What has changed, though, is the application of those values to new business models and strategies that are relevant to the stakeholders at our time. Uh, we have, in the past, invested in water utilities in the 90s. That was a burning stakeholder issue in our country at the time. A significant amount of the water going through the distribution system in Manila was actually being lost just from inefficiencies and lack of quality infrastructure. We invested heavily into that. Um, and, and were able to get the concession for the East Zone of, of Manila. That was a burning stakeholder problem at the time um, in the 90s. Right now, for example, uh, I think what's been discussed uh, really today has been the issues on this energy transition movement. Uh, we see that as a, as a massive pain point within the developing economy in the Philippines as well, and we've wanted to contribute to that solution. So that is why we've invested in AC Energy, and we've had a very uh, focused, renewable approach to that. 
uh, because we believe that's the solution that, that, that incorporates the interests of all the stakeholders um, that, that this challenge uh, produces. So uh, values really haven't changed, uh, Rajiv, but I would say that, that the application of them has changed depending on what the stakeholders need at that point. Okay, let me ask the question a little bit differently. As the, one of the next generation leaders, given you have such a huge weight of legacy on your shoulders, what are you most excited about and most passionate about for the next 20 years for the business? Well, I think, you know, when you have, um, when you have that proposition to stakeholders, right, that you want to incorporate all their interests, it's, it's an exciting proposition because, you know, you can almost do anything if you, if you execute it effectively. You know, I think what's, what's really intriguing about this next phase of Ayala Corporation has been the way that we're attacking the digital economy. Mm. Um, there are a lot of challenges that, that are faced. You know, we, we, we had a, a, a discussion on the, the, the issues of income inequality, um, a lot of issues on access, affordability to services. The digital economy in some ways penetrates those challenges quite mm -hmm. nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get scale, you can reach a lot of users quite uh, effectively with that. And we're starting to apply that in a lot of different models throughout the portfolio. Uh, I alluded to some of the things that AC Health was doing. Uh, we have essentially an omni-channel approach there where we uh, use teleconsultations to acquire customers, understand their behaviors a little bit more and journey them to brick and mortar locations. That's, that's one example of what we can do. Um, I have the privilege uh, of sitting on the board of Gcash, which is a subsidiary of Globe Telecom. It's the leading e-wallet in the Philippines with over 70 million registered users. Uh, and that is a platform that is providing financial services to a segment of the population that frankly did not have access to them before. And I think another great example of the power of this digital economy, and frankly with the Philippines being a very digitally savvy population, um, the opportunities are endless. So, so I'm very excited about those challenges moving forward. Fantastic. Um, there was another interesting one here, yeah. Um, given that we live in such challenging times these days, how do you balance profitability with your principles? That's, a, you know, that's, that's really core to, to, to our strategy, right? Um, what we do is profitability, obviously, is something that is almost front-facing in a lot of the decisions that we make, right? Shareholders, investors are key stakeholders that we have to consider whenever we, we push through with an initiative. Um, what we try and do is we try and incorporate the interests of all stakeholders into these broad decisions. We just we extend past the financial performance and into other metrics. We've adopted sustainability metrics, other ESG metrics. The way in which we meet those financial performances is very important to us. So we try and incorporate it all into the decisions that we make. It, it's, it's more of an art than it is a science. Mm -hmm. um, we have to kind of make calls depending on, on, on how we see the interests of those stakeholders coming into play. Um, but, but, you know, we bear in mind that, that we have to incorporate the interests of all of them uh, in all those decisions. Yeah. No, very good. Okay, maybe we have time for one last question. Ayala's board recently added a new board member, a woman. Do you believe in board gender diversity? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, I think... Uh, that, that's an important part, right, of, um, of, 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 cre of, of cre creating an inclusive environment. Um, it adds uh, more value to the thinking process and how we do things. Uh, women have played a massive role in Ayala Corporation's history. I just made reference to Margarita, um, who I believe had really taken the, the, the mantle from uh, Domingo and Antonio quite well and started building out what it is the portfolio that it is today. 90% um, of our gross asset value comes from four core businesses. Right. Two of them came from Margarita. So, uh, you know, I think uh, having, having a diverse set of opinions, whether that be gender or any other form of diversity, I think adds to value to the organization. Super. Uh, 40 seconds more. So, uh, if, you, if yours was not a family business company, would you be able to apply your tools and approaches successfully too? If not, what would need to be adapted in your view? You know, I, I think um, being a family business sometimes has a competitive advantage. Um, uh, with the ability to you know, influence how resources are allocated, um, we can lend ourselves to a longer term view that maybe some managers might not have. They might not have that luxury. Um, and so, um, you know, I think, I think the role of the family and, and it inherently being a family business is a competitive advantage that frankly we should be leveraging. 
um, and, and, um, and, and using that, that, that advantage to our skills. So um, I think it's a benefit overall. Jaime, once again, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you.